Hi, my name is Frances Hellman, and I'm a professor in the physics department at UC San Diego. And all around behind me is my research laboratory. I do research in magnetic materials, trying to find new ones, um, trying to understand the properties of known magnets. So let me start by showing you uh, a couple of examples of magnets that are all around you. So the first one is a simple refrigerator magnet. And if you look at this, this, the back of this is magnetic, which is why it sticks to your refrigerator. And it looks like it's completely smooth and continuous. But if I look at it with this special little viewing film, you can see there is all these stripes in this, in this material. And let me remind you, let me show you again, that those stripes are not visible when you look at it directly. They're only there when you see it through this sheet. This sheet is a way of looking at what the magnetic properties of that material really are. And so what these stripes represent, or what, they sh what they're showing you, is that the magnetic properties of this are actually consist of what we call domains. Little regions in which the magnetism points one way, and then in the next stripe over, the magnetism points the other way. That fundamentally comes from the magnetic moments, the, which, is the, which is associated with each iron atom, inside each one of those stripes. All the little magnetic moments of each iron atom are all lined up with each other. And in one stripe, they're all lined up pointing this way. And in the next stripe over, they're all lined up pointing the other way. Now, if you don't have one of these little magnetic viewing sheets, you can still find those domains. What you do is you just take the, one of these flexible magnets, and you cut a small piece off of it, off one side. And then if I take this little strip that I just cut off, I can slide it across and you can feel it jumping. That's where all those little domains are lining up with each other. You remember that they were parallel. The stripes were all parallel to each other. So by cutting this piece off, if I get the stripes to align with each other, it sticks. And then as I move it along, you can feel it jumping. So your refrigerator magnet is actually much more complicated than it looks like when you first look at it. If I look at the periodic table, there are lots and lots and lots of elements in here. But in fact, there's only a few that are actually magnetic. There's a little group right up here, iron, cobalt, and nickel, that are magnetic. And then there's a whole group down here, which we call the rare earths, which are also magnetic. And that's it out of the entire periodic table. Nothing else is, is magnetic when it's uh, made as a, into a, as a solid. Most of the best magnets are made out of combinations of things. And the, what are called the rare earth magnets are um, the strongest. And they're called rare earth magnets because they're a mixture of one of those rare earths from the bottom of the periodic table with either iron or cobalt from that little group up at the top of the table. That mixture gives it these really remarkable properties. You can see that they're strong enough that this one will actually jump out of my hand when I get it close enough. Let me show you that again. Okay, and that's, it's strong enough to, be, to hold right through my hand. So that, these magnets are a mixture of one of the rare earths and, one of, and either iron or cobalt. Now, if I can do the same thing by putting it onto a, um, just, just using this, this is a plate of um, just brass, totally not magnetic. But if I put the one magnet on either side of that, I can actually move the top magnet around by just moving the bottom magnet. And in fact, I can actually flip this over by flipping over the bottom one. The reason this flips over is that each one of these magnets has what we call a north and a south pole. And the north pole of one magnet wants to line up with the south pole of the other magnet, and vice versa. So when I flip the bottom magnet over, its north pole is now near the other one's North Pole, and so the top magnet flips over in order to keep them in their proper alignment. Now, this is what we call stainless steel, and stainless steel is more or less iron, but with these trace elements, lots of other things in it, to give it good properties. And stainless steel can be magnetic like this, or this is another kind of stainless steel, totally not magnetic. All right? And yet the differences are rather small in terms of what's in there, but extremely important in terms of their magnetic properties. This screw is nearly entirely iron. The reason it's not magnetic is iron, under some circumstances, depending on the spacing between the atoms, instead of arranging itself with all of the atoms, all of their magnetic moments all lined up parallel to each other, which is what makes something be magnetic, in this case, 
the iron atoms are still magnetic individually, but one is lined up this way, one is lined up this way, the next one this way, the next one this way. That's something that we call an antiferromagnet. An antiferromagnet does not mean that it's opposite to magnetism. It's really just that it, it ends up being non-magnetic because it has every, you know, alternating moments up and down. Okay? I have something here. This is called a ferrofluid. It's basically a bunch of iron filings in a liquid. So you can see it, I can kind of move it around and, and, and all the iron filings accumulate at the bottom. Now this is magnetic, even though it's suspended in a liquid. And so for example, if I take this magnet, I can, perf I can hold it like that. It will, the, the magnetic force is enough to suspend this, this entire jar. But I can do a very cool thing with this. If I hold it like this really close, then the, the magne magnetic filings just spread out. But if I, as I start pulling this away, if I get just the right distance, I get these little spiky things appearing. And what that is, is that those, the iron filings are following what we call the magnetic field lines produced by this magnet. And there's a competition between the magnetic energy and the surface tension of these particles in the liquid. So you can see it gets these really amazing spiky patterns. Thank you very much. Have some fun with magnets at home. Bye-bye.